Welcome to this week's Tuesday Truth for Kids. If you're not a kid and it's not Tuesday and you're still watching, that's okay. We have been looking at reasons why we need Jesus from true stories in the book of Matthew. What needs to be fixed in your house? In my house at the moment, there's a whole pile of things like old blenders, an old chair, and even an old kettle that needs to be fixed. And I'm trying to fi figure out if I'm going to fix it or throw it away when we move to a new house. Now I want you to think about your life. Is there something in your life that you want to be fixed? So not a thing like a kettle or a chair, but maybe a relationship a friendship with someone or a relationship with your mom or dad. Maybe you want the amount of money that your family has to be fixed. Maybe you really want to achieve something and you want what you are and who you are at school to be fixed. Maybe you want your health to be fixed. Well, today we are going to see that we all need Jesus to fix us. But what he came to fix is not what we would expect we will hear a true story of a man who couldn't walk. He needed Jesus to fix his legs. And when he was brought to Jesus, we would expect that his legs would be the very first thing that Jesus would fix. But instead, we see that Jesus forgave his sin. This comes to us as a surprise because imagine not being able to walk. It must be really, really difficult. But we'll see that the sin in our lives is the biggest problem. And that is what we need Jesus for. So let's have a look at our true story. If you have your Bible with you or your Bible app, go to Matthew. That's the first book in the New Testament. Testament and we'll read from chapter 9, verses 1 to 8. Jesus stepped into a boat, crossed over and came to his own town. Some men brought to him a paralyzed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. At this, some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, This fellow is blaspheming. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, get up, take your mat and go home. Then the man got up and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were filled with awe and they praised God who had given such authority to man. So what happens here in this amazing true story? So far, we have seen Jesus have power over nature when he calmed the storm, over sickness, and also over evil. And now we get to see that he has power over sin. Jesus came to his own town, the town of Capernaum, and he saw the faith of the men who brought the paralyzed man to him and the faith of the man himself. And he said, take heart, your sins are forgiven. They must have had such great courage to bring this man to Jesus to be healed. Jesus took care of the man's biggest problem first. And this makes us think about sin. It's worse for us to have sin in our lives than it is to not be able to walk or to be paralyzed. Being paralyzed, unable to walk or do something, that is a picture of what sin does to us. Sin hurts God, it hurts us, and it also hurts people around us. Sin is our biggest problem because it separates us from God. All good things that we have in life, all of that comes from God. And if we are separated from him because of our sin, we can't truly enjoy good things in life either. Now, the religious leaders, they were really important people. They didn't see the miracle of Jesus forgiving the man. They saw blasphemy. Blasphemy means when you say something against God or when you claim or pretend to be God. These leaders knew that only God can forgive sins. 
So when Jesus said that he forgave the man's sin, they got really, really angry. But they didn't realize that Jesus is God and that all sin is against Jesus. But Jesus, he knew what was going on in their hearts. So what did he do next? He then did the miracle of healing the man's legs. He fixed the man's problem of not being able to walk as well. And he did this to prove that he truly is God's son. The crowd was so amazed. They praised God and they couldn't believe that someone who looked like just a normal man could do such an amazing thing. What does this story mean for us today? Just like the man needed Jesus to fix his legs, we might also have things in our lives that we need to be fixed. But Jesus first fixed his heart by forgiving his sin or taking it away. And this shows us that the man's biggest problem and our biggest problem is sin. More than anything else, you and I need Jesus to forgive our sin. And Jesus did this. He died on the cross to take the punishment for our sin in our place. And he rose again on the third day, which means he has power over sin and death. Jesus does forgive us if we just come to him and ask. So I want to ask you two questions. Will you come to Jesus to fix so that he can fix the problem of your sin? Do you believe that Jesus can forgive your sin and fix your broken relationship with God? And the second question is, when this happens, how will you respond to Jesus? Will you just like the crowd be amazed at what he has done and worship him every day of your life? Let's pray together. Jesus, thank you so much for coming to earth to fix our biggest problem, sin. Thank you that you took the punishment for our sin in our place so that we can be forgiven and have life with God forever. Help us to trust you, Jesus. Help us to trust you to fix this very big problem and help us to trust you with everything else in our lives as well. Help us to praise you as our rescuer and also as our King. Amen. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week for another reason why we all need Jesus. Jesus.